Hi, I'm Katie Hicks. I'm the Assistant Director of Clean Water for North Carolina, a nonprofit organization working with communities for clean water and environmental justice. We're opposed to the construction of all new nuclear reactors for many reasons, including massive water use and generation of toxic radioactive waste and increased demand for fuel where mining has a massive record of health impacts on poor and indigenous communities. But today I'll focus on three aspects of the draft environmental impact statement for the proposed reactors. Make up pond C, impacts to the Broad River, and environmental justice considerations. The draft EIS does not adequately show that make up pond C's capacity will suffice to maintain plant operation and protect water quality and flow in all possible drought scenarios. So we believe its negative impacts outweigh its benefits. Pond C's creation would displace residents of up to 86 homes and mobile homes, mostly low-income folks. I visited a few of them earlier today. The average per capita income of residents who would be displaced is uh, below $16,000. The pond's creation would also result in complete loss of rare and valuable Piedmont riparian habitat along London Creek. Uh, the question was brought up earlier about how long the water supply would last. I just did some simple back-of-the-envelope calculations based on the draft EIS, and they indicated that if withdrawals from Pond C are made necessary by drought, that that pond supply would last more or less about 90 days. Since climate science predicts that many parts of the world will experience longer and deeper droughts than ever in the coming years, uh, Duke Energy's drought contingency plans are insufficient, considering both the high level of uncertainty regarding the length of future droughts in the Broad River Basin. The proposed reactor's water withdrawals and degradation of the Broad River are another concern that would place further strain on an already strained river basin. In addition to the roughly 47 million gallons of water per day the plant would withdraw, um, <clears throat> We've calculated that the Broad would lose roughly five and a half billion gallons of water each year due to forced evaporation of heated water downstream of the plant. Discharges of hot water, heavy metals, and possibly traces of radiation can place stress on the aquatic community. And massive withdrawals and toxic discharges are also a potential threat to drinking water supplies downstream. The draft EIS uh, indicates that the city of Union's drinking water intake is just 21 miles downstream of the proposed discharge. Finally, the draft EIS does not adequately address the range of environmental injustices we feel that this plant could create. The assessment included in the EIS only looks at demographics in the surrounding 50 mile radius as a whole failing to include any pockets of low-income or minority residents who could be selectively and disproportionately impacted by the facility. For example, the residents I visited earlier today displaced by Pond C would be mostly low to mid-income, meaning relocating could be even more difficult for them. The residents of Union, whose water supply could be threatened by withdrawals and discharges to the broad, could also be looked at in terms of those demographics. Those are just a few examples of the many direct and indirect ways in which this plant could severely impact vulnerable communities and populations. In conclusion, Clean Water for NC opposes the construction of the William States Lee Nuclear Station. We support the ener energy conservation alternative in section 9.2.1.3 of the draft EIS. Despite the NRC's claim that this method isn't a reasonable alternative, our extensive research has shown that demand reduction through energy efficiency programs is the most cost-effective and job-creating strategy for meeting our energy needs. Thank you for your time. Thank you.